childhood. I mean, really, wow, just Agreed. so beautiful. I was like, okay, can't mess up the makeup. <laughs> um, Aladdin has been, I grew up a 90s kid, and um, every, yes, thank you. Shout out to other 90s kids. Yeah. Aladdin, okay, here's the real 90s kids. The OG Sega Genesis Aladdin game. Y'all remember that? Yes, yes. I used to go to Blockbuster all the time, making my parents rent that. Uh, it was such a huge part of my life and so many of our lives. So I'm very excited to bring out our cast right now. I think we're great, okay, good. Uh, first up, we have director Guy Ritchie. Almost. I might need to kill some more time. Sega Genesis, let's see what else do we have. The animated series, the animated series. Um, uh, oh, we're good now, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I can spit all this Broadway musical. Uh, there was also the Aladdin at uh, California Adventure. Okay, but we are ready. So please put your hands together for director Guy Ritchie. <laughs> Up next, we have our genie, Will Smith. cinema. So it's hard to be specific about exactly what it is that you're supposed to derive from it, other than a sensation which can only really be encapsulated by a very positive version of being uncynical. That, you know, we, we want people to leave with a sense of positivity and hopefully a sense of freshness and all that sort of stuff. But really, I, I think it's a question of how it is that you leave the cinema. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, Mina, you stepping into the role of Aladdin, um, what are you excited for, for people to see as far as this, this film? Uh, you know, I, I'm especially proud of the representation and, and the ethnically diverse casting that was put together for this. Um, it's not often you can go to a movie theater and see all people of color represented like this. It's certainly something that... Um, I was missing in my childhood, so I'm um, proud of the cast and, and uh, the casting that Guy and Disney put together. So I'm excited for little boys and girls to go see people that look like them on screen, yes. man. That's what I'm proud of. Yeah! Woo! And Naomi, 
Jasmine was our first Disney princess of color. Um, she also has a new uh, song in Speechless. What was it like doing that scene? And also, how do you feel that song resonates today? Um, yeah, oh gosh, where do I start? So, Speechless, written by this guy over here, Alan Menken, Pasek and Paul. Um, yes, ben Pasek and Justin Paul. Yes, who are, who, you know, La La Land, Greatest Showman, you know. Jeremy Hansen. Exactly. Very wonderful, wonderful. Incredible writers. So, you know, the fact that they wrote a song and I get to sing it, first of all, I was like, wow, that's already surreal. Um, but also then when I heard it, just the words and the lyrics and how timely it was, you know, the message behind the song and um, the idea of not going speechless, that everyone has a voice, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter what your gender, your voice matters and um, speaking out against injustice matters, you know, not just standing by and, and being a spectator. Um, so yeah, like that day was like, very emotional, right guy? <laughs> back to that Richie crying, back to but, I mean, but, but it was really emotional because, um, you know, I wanted it to feel raw in the, you know, and I wanted it to feel like it's what she's going through in that moment and uh, uh, we did some of it live as well, which was a different type of challenge. And um, yeah, you know, it's out there. The song is, for me, it's like, it's the world's song. It's like, whatever it will be, it will be. And whatever people take from it, they will take. I'm just obviously very blessed to be the person to kind of embody it in the movie. I did want you to know personally that people were emotional in our theater during that scene. Yes, people were weeping and sniffling and full-blown sobbing. Uh, that was my friend Kathy. Who was snogging? She was well, that's a... That's that was a different, that was that was a different movie, girl! That was a different movie. Um, Naveed, I had a question for you because uh, growing up uh, watching Disney films, so many of them have a father-daughter dynamic element to them. What was important about this Sultan's story arc with his daughter? Um, I, I believe the most important thing was uh, for him to show um, how much he, appre he appreciates her. I mean, um, I, I think every father, no matter what, uh, they they see a princess in their little girl. And we had a discussion with Guy, we were sitting and we were talking about the kids, and uh, I have to say something about Naomi. Uh, there's, a, there's a princess inside her. I never forget we were on the set and we were working. Um, some of the, ADs, they were a little bit distressed and they were yelling at the background actors. And this girl took the mic, went over on the balcony and said, we can't be nicer to each other, can't we? So the princess is inside her, I never forget that day. Do you remember the day that we were on the balcony and somebody down there was yelling? Okay. So, I'm going to go with... I'm that just was me, go that's yelling by the way. But okay. truly, it's just uh, finding uh, finding your inner uh, inner magic, believing in yourself, who you are, and what you are is special. There is nobody else like you, and I think the film represents that. I mean, Mina, he discovered he discovered the light inside him, and it was beautiful. The whole uh, journey was ex an amazing experience. Um, my next question is for Nassim. Uh, so Dahlia is a completely new character that the world has never seen before. Also cool because we get to add another prominent woman of color to our Disney roster. So since you didn't have a character to base this off of, how did you go about bringing her to life? Well, it was so fun because it was, I think, all the joy of creating something from scratch, but then watching that intersect with the story we all know and love. Um, which I had so much respect for coming into it. I'm a 90s kid, so for me, Aladdin was like golden age Disney. And um, to echo what Mina said, I'm so proud to be part of the most diversely cast Disney movie of all time, I think. Um, and it really, that film resonated with me as a child because it was the first time I saw a Middle Eastern protagonist, you know, in a major motion picture. So to get to be a part of that and play a little fun role, um, in being Jasmine's friend and handmaiden, and especially under the guidance of a guy who's so collaborative and fun, and every day you're like, oh my gosh, how, how, like, he puts 
the scene up on its feet and it turns into a whole fun new thing that you wouldn't have necessarily even seen on the page. It was just such a blast. And we got to spend time together. Most of my scenes, a lot of my scenes were with Naomi. We got to spend time together before we started filming and there was just such an instant camaraderie and friendship that I think hopefully translates into the dynamic of the characters. It does. You all had such a beautiful chemistry together. All of you. Um, she won't say, but like, she kills it in this movie. I think also like she does so much improv because she's such an amazing writer as well. She was just coming out with like, I was just laughing the whole time. I couldn't keep it together. But like she literally, I think she brought more to the character than I think anyone could have even imagined for this role. Um, and like literally she just, annihilates it. I heard that sometimes y'all had to cut for giggles. Yeah. Yes, cut it, stop for giggling. <laughs> um, my next question is for Gemma. One, congratulations on uh, Game of Thrones tonight. I know you have a huge... Woo! Yeah. Uh, congratulations on that. Um, so I know that Agrabah being that it is a port city and has, has, is influenced by many different cultures that you brought to, to this film, what was the most fun part of researching? Uh, is that right? Or? Um, the most fun part of researching, I think, was just throwing everything up in the air and letting it settle and thinking about the parts of the world that we wanted to explore for our kingdom and our land and uh, letting it all kind of gradually come together and as the different demands of the film grew, then different parts of that set grew and um, creating a world for this fantastic bunch of mad people, I think, <laughs> was uh, you, left of my job. Did you keep anything? Did anyone keep anything? I'm kind of really curious about that. Do you ever keep anything from the set? I've got a bat from the... <coughs> a bat? Well, in Jafar's study, which actually was probably the least seen uh, part of the film, I made these bats and went around. At one point, I had some mad idea that they'd be floating around in some scene, and so I've got them in my garden. <laughs> I, I've got more of the more of that set than you can imagine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I basically got the whole of Agrabah. I, I gradually clawed it off Disney as time went on. Yeah, I always try to keep a little piece of wardrobe. Like, yeah, like for for me, whatever reason, the, the wardrobe has a, a really great value. So I always, you know, I, you know, I tucked a turban on the way. <laughs> they weren't small those turbans. Yeah. Like. <laughs> no, just uh, just on the point that Gemma was saying. Um, uh, Gemma and Alan and the rest of the team. What what became fun is that everyone came to the spirit in no small way because when Will came, who was number one on the call sheet, um, it, his positivity sort of flowed all the way down. It started from the top and went down. And then everyone was, there was an incredibly positive spirit throughout the whole uh, process. And actually my job was really to encourage them to be more of themselves. So everyone had a degree of improvisation that, they, they, which was just natural to them. And as I said, my job was just to encourage more of that. But uh, people like Gemma and Alan, what was conspicuous to me is really that they are still like children in the best possible sense. Um, in the fact that they're still incredibly excited about their jobs. So Gemma gets very excited about what it is that she I does. thought you meant that they take all your money and eat all your food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, working with them is a tremendous pleasure for me because you're, you're kind of, you're, it's, it's like you're all kids still. And so, from sort of from Will's point of view and from, from the actor's point of view, they were all having a tremendous amount of fun. But from Alan's point of view and from Jem's point of view, there's, everyone's like kids, you know, and no one's cynical in that sense. And I, I give, give that most of the credit to you then, Will. That Will is not cynical. And it, you know, by the time you've been doing what we've been doing for 30 years, it's very easy to become jaded and cynical. And, and actually no one on the set was cynical. So, I, I mean, Will said it, but you know, for me it was, it, was, it was the most fun, creative process I've ever, I've ever been through. Yeah, I was saying, um, Disney, Disney magic is real. That's my first Disney movie. And there's something that Walt Disney did in the design of these stories that at the core, of these stories is something that you know uh, shocks the inner child within you and forces it to come alive and and um, 
smile and, and appreciate the, the moment. So, you know, for me, that be, you know, coming into this, you know, first starting with fear, uh, it's very started, that definitely started with fear, you know, the, what Robin Williams did with this character was, was um, you know, he just, he just didn't leave a lot of room to add to, to the genie. So I started off fearful, but then when I got with the music, it just started waking up that fun, childlike, silly uh, uh, part of me. And it, it, like I was saying, this was, you know, the most joyful experience of, of my career. Yes, that, that really came through too. It's just so. I was going to ask you because you did so many uh, musical numbers yeah. and rapping and acting and dancing and, and juggling and all this. Was there any one particular song that you resonated with the most? Well, the, the song that got me over the hump of yes, I can, I can play Genie uh, was Friend Like Me. Um, I went into the studio the first day and I really wanted to play with it to see if, if, if I could add something to it. And, you know, literally 30 minutes in the studio and starting to play with it and, you know, finding that, you know, in that, you know, 94, 96 BPM range, we were playing around in there. I think it ultimately was a little bit faster than that. but. That, that 94, 96 BPM range is right old school hip hop. You know, so I, you know, I grabbed uh, the, the Honey Drippers uh, Impeach the President, which is, you know, a really classic old school hip hop break beat, and I had them throw that break beat under there. And I messed with that, and I messed with Eric B and Rockham's I Know You Got Soul under Friend Like Me, and I was like, oh my God, I'm home, I'm home, and then I started playing with the, the hip hop flavor, and then the genie was really born in my mind from the music, and what I understood once I played with Friend Like Me. Yeah, it was great, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I said to a lot, I liken myself to an architect, you know, I design a house that others are gonna live in, and Will, and you threw a hell of a party in that house. <laughs> yeah, and I just loved it, it was just, once he, he did that, I just go, just, back off and let him do what he does, because it's so good. Well, I would love a Spotify playlist of like all of your influences coming <laughs> into this. If we can make that happen, that would be great. Got you, got you. <laughs> um, I did want to make sure that I open it up to press uh, for the remainder of this time. I see the first hand that was up right here in the white shirt. Well, congratulations. Uh, it's amazing considering what you just said, uh, coming up against uh, the history of Robin Williams's, you know, stamp on this. So, can you talk a little bit about what you look for these days with it, with your career? Uh, Guy just said, you know, after thirty years, people could get jaded, and you're not, you know, and you've got this, and then this very strange-looking, serious sci-fi movie coming a month later with Ang Lee. Yeah, you know, for, for, you know, I took a couple of years off, um, and uh, I, I, I guess I had sort of hit a ceiling in my life. I had created the, the things that I could create in my career. Um, I, was, I was getting to the end of my wisdom with leading my family, and I, I kind of got to a point where uh, I had a bit, a bit of a, just a collapse of my life and creations. You know, so I took a couple of years off, um, uh, essentially to study, you know, to uh, study and journey spiritually. Um, and Aladdin was really my first sort of coming back in and, you know, seeing if my heart was even still in this kind of performing. And what I discovered is everything starts with what am I saying to the world? Um, what how does this piece contribute to the human family? Can I go around the world with the ideas that the movie represents and um, can I teach and preach these ideas in good conscience? Um, and with Aladdin, you know, checks all of those boxes. Uh, I love the idea of genie and one of the things that I related to uh, in genie is that, you know, the genie has shackles. Right? So the, the genie has these you know, spectacular powers, 
but he's, he's shackled. Like he's, he is a, uh, a, a prisoner of his spiritual fate. And that's sort of how I felt with Will Smith. I was sort of shackled by Will Smith. And in these last couple of years, I've just started finding my freedom, where I'm getting free of Will Smith and I'm getting more comfortable being me. Um, so Aladdin was that first step back out. Um, and in terms of Gemini Man, that was like, you know, we were not going to talk about that yet, but that, you know, but there, you know, just the ideas of that, and, and there, there's, you know, some deep concepts under that, and uh, really it's just about my beliefs, you know, I, I'm going out into the world and I have a big, big voice and people look and people listen, and I just want to make sure I'm saying things that um, improve and contribute to, to people's life and growth and uh, joy and evolution. Well, I watch your uh, inspirational Instagram stories, which have gotten me through many a day. I'm so glad I got to see one live and in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I see a hand with the two right here. Yep, it turned to five. Um, right in the second row. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm getting everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, my question is for Guy, and um, this is a resolutely Disney film, and yet I was also struck by, uh, by how much of a Guy Ritchie movie it was, and I'm wondering if you could talk about um, some of the things you thought you brought to this um, production that, that no one else could. I don't know about the last bit, <laughs> um, but you'll be surprised how familiar I am in this territory, considering you've got five kids, the oldest one's 18, which pretty much means I've been uh, up to my eyeballs in Disney production for, for 19 years. Um, and also by sort of family demand, it was about time I made a movie that we could all watch together. So uh, Aladdin ticked the box in the sense that you know, it was a street hustler and I was familiar with that territory. Uh, my wife is a big um, Disney file and anything to do with Disney princesses is high on her list. So it, it was really a question of uh, demand by the family. Um, and fr frankly, I, you know, it, I was just ready to do something in this world. And, and then, of course, it's very hard to be objective about your own work. But, you know, inevitably what happens is, is that you leave an imprint upon it. Um, but, I, you know, some clever director once said that the lion's share of directing is casting, and I think that's true. And I think once we got our little team together, then we were all on the same frequency, and it didn't take us long before we all dialed into that frequency. And then all the, it just all worked from there. Um, and it all came out very organically, actually. I think the, the beautiful thing that Guy does on set is that he creates a sense of family and community. And, um, everybody feels free to create and bring their take on it. And um, then he kind of molds it from there, but he allows us to play, and I think that's something that no one else could have done as, as well as Guy. Yeah, that's a, re that's a really beautiful approach that he has. Um, uh, you know, I, I heard an idea in, in, the, uh, in The Alchemist about a shepherd leading from behind, and that's a really beautiful approach that Guy takes. It's like the first five or six takes, he doesn't say anything, he just watches. You know, he just lets you do it and you do it and you know, he sees what all, everybody's choices are naturally and he watches and everybody gets excited and we're playing and we feel like we're making it. And then he comes in and just gently starts to guide, or, you know, everybody back towards uh, what he wants. And um, he, he's wildly collaborative and open and it's a rare combination to be that open and that definitive at the same time. It's a, it's a very uh, difficult thing to, to do, and uh, he, he has mastered that very well. I think another, oh sorry. Yeah, no, I think I'm being very kind here. But the thing is, is I'm not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm hoping they're gonna do it for me. <laughs> another example though is, perfect example might be like One Jump Ahead, right? One Jump Ahead is one of those songs in the animated movie which is, Almost choreographed. Like, one jump, head, red light. It's very sweet, very clever, very stagey. And Guy, I know, wanted to get to the truth underneath it to go, who is a lad in this more than just a guy performing, as Guy said, jazz hands? Um, 
And so we tore that song apart. We, we tried it this way, we tried it that way to get a swagger into it. And he challenged me and, and the whole music team to go to a, a different place. We went to some pretty extreme places. And then what we came back to, it feels like one jump ahead to me, but it feels very real. Um, so it, it, whatever happened in that process worked. I think a lot of it too has to do with the fact that Guy is truly the least rigid filmmaker. And I feel like when I watch the film, so much of the joy that is there came from his spontaneity and his comfort in finding something on the day, which I would imagine is a challenge for a movie on the scale. I mean, you look around and you're like, the money is being spent. There are so many pieces in place and it's really easy to just be locked into an idea you had of something, but he was so open to finding new things on the day, like you just mentioned, that it made it so fun for us. Uh, I see one right there. Is that Laura? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know my... <laughs> Hello. <Hi. laughs> um, so what I love about the movie is that it, like before, like, I, like everyone loves animated films, but it came from an origin from East Asian, South Asian, and Middle Eastern culture. And I really love that you guys were able to put that all together in this film. Um, how important was it to tell this tale, not only from the animated um, motion picture, but also the origin culturally to keep it authentic? Uh, I had a feeling that was coming my way. <laughs> <laughs> I have an opinion if you'd like me to go first. Yeah, you crack them. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I think it is, is you know, critically important to be able um, to pull stories and um, you know, colors and textures and tastes from around the world. I think that um, in this particular time in the world, that kind of inclusion and uh, diversity it will be a critical part of uh, turning our connectivity, because we have more connectivity than ever, ever but trans transitioning that connectivity into harmony is going to be really critical and I think these kinds of interactions um, in these types of movies are a, a powerful uh, global service so it was critical and important to me um, uh, I spent a lot of time in the Middle East also so this this one particularly was was uh, critically important in in that way God no, I think you've done it very nicely <laughs> Uh, I see in the second row, right here on the end. Yeah. Well, congratulations, all of you. Uh, number one, I'm thrilled to see a very jiggy genie. <laughs> um, but that's I, actually the first time I've heard that's good. That's the first time. Leave it to the gal from I'm Philly. Oh, there you go. There you go. Definitely repeating that one. I, I've got to ask Gemma. Such a beautiful job with the production design. But what you had to do with this film, it takes it to a different level than what most production designers have to do because we're not just looking at eye level. You have to worry about the overhead levels and the view from the world above, looking down. What were some of the challenges and your considerations in your production design to give us the bird's eye view and the street view? Um, that's um, quite difficult to, <laughs> to answer. Um, I think what happens is you um, you start to create your whole world and it takes me over as much as anything else. So the world just kind of grows up. I think you have to realise that also a lot of, I was working very closely with Jazz Jarrett, Chaz Jarrett, who is the visual effects person. So we kind of worked together on some of the overhead worlds. We built models, we worked it all out very sort of mathematically as to how you'd see everything. Um, but I think the world, um, it just kind of grew as the, with the script, with the characters, with the, a lot of the, um, the dance uh, sequences needed to be very seriously choreographed and I had to work very carefully with them to, you know, that there'd be 10 yards before they jump something, 20 feet before they'd fall, you know, it was all kind of requirements, it was like, uh, it's very hard to explain, I don't know if to help me. Uh, but um, 
it, it kind of grows, they work together. So I'm visually hanging on to my vision and not wanting to lose any element of that. And meanwhile, they all have to do all these extraordinary feats. So we all work together, really. I think if that answers any of your questions. <laughs> Well, what, what happened also that is spectacular and as, as an actor, and it's interesting because, you, uh, you know, we've never done an interview or anything together, so it's interesting for me to uh, be here with you and hear you discuss those things. The, the ultimate compliment from the actor's point of view is we were transported to the time and place. And that's what happened when we walked on that set. When you walked through, it was, woo. It's in, it was in the textures of the walls and all of that, and the stairs were real. You could go up and go out onto the rooftop, and all. You know, it, it was a, it was a powerful way to transport the actors into the emotions and the smells of the of the the time and place. Thank you, Will. I mean, I have to say, I enjoyed every single moment of it. Yeah. I've never had such fun as I had building building that world, actually. Um, let me get this side, get right on the end. Hey, well, good job for you and for everyone. Three wishes from this movie. What would your three wishes be in real life? Uh. Three wishes from the movie. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I, you know it, it's funny. We were we were having this discussion. It's a, sort of it's a, it, it will be uh, uh, wildly underwhelming. But um, uh, we were talking about that, and I would I would have uh, one wish, and my, my one wish uh, would be uh, divine understanding. And that's the thing that, that I've been finding in, in uh, I just turned 50 this year, and that lack of understanding, um, confusion uh, is, is the, the mother of fear and violence. Um, so for me, I would, I would absolutely wish for divine understanding to be shared with all. I think that understanding is, is the seeds of peace. Thank you. Uh, I think that, wait, I can do this. One, two, three, fourth row, hands still up right in the middle. How can you even see? see? I, I'm trying to make the effort to, I got you. Thank you. Uh, this is for Naomi Scott. Uh, you're a singer anyway, and the Disney style is kind of quite specific. I just wondered how much adjustment it was uh, to sing in that context, and if and what kind of the differences you felt the were to explore. Sorry, I feel like, I don't know if I'm looking at you or not. I'm kind of just like, I'm trying to interact with you, but like, it's a good question. Um, uh, I think that number one, you're kind of, singing in character in a way but it's it's interesting because this was a discussion because obviously the accent is this mid atlantic kind of weird thing uh, so obviously i sing how i naturally sing is a bit more kind of in my own voice you know um, so definitely i had to put on some type of voice um, but i think yeah like it was it was a challenge especially like this the singing live thing as well was was, I really wanted to do it, but it, again, it was a challenge. We had like an earpiece, and um, I was basically singing a cappella in this like quiet room to myself, like a crazy person. <laughs> Literally, that's what it felt like. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, I think that's how I viewed it. I was like, I'm in character, you know. But I definitely did want it to. I did want to put on a musical theatre voice as well. Like you know, it was, we were talking. I was talking to Alan about like I didn't want it to feel like performancey or like. Um, I still wanted it to feel like you're kind of going through what she's going through. And again, like I naturally tend to sway more in the kind of R&B world um, in terms of just my own music. So I maybe added a little bit of that. I don't really know what happened in that booth, but uh, I think it was a mix of both. It was kind of like singing in character, also bringing a little bit of my own flavor. I guess, well, you know, similar, to, I guess, to what you kind of did. Um, so yeah, that's how I viewed it. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> and to, to add to that, so every aspect of that song kind of raised a different bar that we had, because once that song was in place, we go, okay, now, how do we set that song up? How do we create the moments when she would actually break into that 
that work with the story and, and, and organically we lead into it. So we divide it into those two parts. So first part is, I don't want to remain speechless. Second part is, I won't remain speechless. And then also, yes, it does have a, a much more of a pop sort of feel to it. So we had, you know, if, if we saw a screening like we did, like, I don't know, eight months ago, it's, oh, it's not, it's not yet feeling like in the score. So we did a lot of work, number one, threading themes in and taking that pop orchestration but adding in the colors of Aladdin in. And, you know, it's nerve wracking, but at the end of the day, it actually really, really works. I'm so glad. <laughs> and, no, well, I don't know about this girl. What's she going to do with it? And your, your R&B and pop inflections make it it's perfect within, within the context of, of the story and the arrangement and all that. It's exactly the right balance, I think. Thank you. Um, one, two, three. I see a hand right here on the end. <laughs> I just see phantom hands. Um, maybe like fifth or fifth or sixth row. Yep. Whoever wants it. Yep. <laughs> Fight for the mic. Go. <laughs> Hello. Um, this question is for Naomi and Guy. So Princess Jasmine kind of has always been female empowerment. I believe she had a line in the original. Um, I am not a prize to be won. So can you just talk about a little bit about the enhancement of this female empowerment for Princess Jasmine in this film? Let's go first. Me? You? Here you go. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing when you have a vision for a character and you think, oh, I'd love to see you know, Disney do this with this character and it aligns with the people involved, it aligns with what, you know, uh, with Guy and, and our producers. Um, for me, I, I really think it was a natural progression. I mean, Guy said something in Amman, which I thought was really great. He was talking about um, equality of challenge as well. So the, the idea, I'm stealing your th thing now, um, the idea that, you know, Jasmine needed even more of a challenge in this movie as well. And um, as I said, it's a natural progression. The fact that she wants to become the leader, I kind of just want people to walk out and go, Oh yeah, that, that makes sense, right? You know, she you know she should be the leader, um, and as opposed to it, you know, it's not this thing that's been shoehorned in. It just makes sense, you know. And she's a human. Uh, for me, as an actor, my main thing is okay. How do I humanize her? How do I give her depth? Um, and so those things just came naturally. Um, and yeah, and, and yeah, go ahead. What are you thinking? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So you're right. <laughs> I took what you said. I took it. No, 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 no. It's, all, it's, all, it's, it's valid. But the, the, what was conspicuous, if, if there was anything that looked like there could be some evolution in this narrative, it was that there needed to be a voice given to Jasmine. I mean, Aladdin had been given enough challenges to dig on when the genie had his hands full. And it, it, the, the most conspicuous character thereafter was, was, was Jasmine who was arguably a tad passive in the uh, original. And it just felt like there was an, an obvious space um, there that we could that we could have worked on. And as Nomi just said, it really, to me, it was, it was about the quality of challenge. Uh, because there's, there's no point banging on about something unless you can back it up. So, you know, not only did Alan come up with what I think is the best song on the film mm -hmm. but uh, to illustrate that particular point but uh, this is the bit where i got the reputation of being called cry richie it <laughs> is it is because um you know Nomi, who's a tremendous pleasure to work with but his i mean i don't want this to turn into the sycophantic show which is slightly in danger of becoming that but uh, Nomi as a performer embodies uh she, she's very light of spirit but when it comes to actually uh, committed to a performance that is profound, she can immediately switch into that mode, which to me is the best of everything. Because you can talk to a, a human being before they perform, and then as they perform, they deliver at 100%. So she was you know, wonderful at doing that, so actually so was everyone else. But in that particular case, uh, Naomi was spectacular. Um, but it, it's that particular part of the scene I'm very proud of, really. And, as we all should be, because we all worked on this together. But it's, she earns her right there. And to me, it's not really about gender as much as it is 
about an individual standing up for themselves at a pertinent time, and then they can illustrate that point, they can articulate that point, and they have the, the breadth of personality to do that. And it, I think it really works, actually, that part of the film, because it is backed up. Um, so that, that just felt like it was the most obvious place that this narrative could evolve, was to give Princess Jasmine a voice and that she could back that voice up. I think we have time for one more question. Um, I want to make sure I get Aww. someone from the back again. Um, Just get warmed up. <laughs> really? Oh, I see someone waving their hand. That person, I'm waving back to you, please. In the seventh row, I think. I'm just making up numbers. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to talk because the songs and the music was so great, but also the dance in this was unbelievable. Um, a very Bollywood vibe. I, I just loved it. So, Mina, I wanted to, to ask you about, you know, sort of all the moves you made in this, of, you know, working with, with the Will guy over there. Yeah, um, Jamal Sims, a choreographer, and Nikki Anderson were spectacular. Um, Jamal's one of the best in the business, and I grew up watching Step Up, which to me was like a dance film of my generation. And Jamal choreographed that film. The 12 year old Step Up is doing like, that was the one. And that was the one. <laughs> so it was amazing getting to work with him. Uh, me and Naomi, fun enough, we wanted to focus more on the connection in that piece because getting the choreography down is one thing, but we wanted to focus on connecting. And then the other part of it, me and Guy had a fun time during that because I had to learn that choreography at the beginning, but then pretend like the genie was manipulating me. So we tried doing it with mine, and then Guy actually had this brilliant idea to actually attach these long puppeteering arms onto me and physically manipulate me. So uh, we had a lot of fun with that piece. It was definitely a fun part uh, of the whole process. It's a bit of a shame we feel as though Jamal should actually be sitting up here. I know, right, yeah. yeah because in no small part, Jamal had... It, Jamal actually is the prince to those that have seen it, uh, seen the movie, that uh, the genie concocts on the, on the rocks there. Um, I just want to go home, man. <laughs> He was a major, my golly, I tell you, if anyone represented this, uh, the spirit of this film, it was yeah, Jamal. Because sure. yeah. Jamal came 100% into this project. Yeah. And it, it, every time you'd see him, he was just so excited yeah. about what he was about to do. And he, the English weather didn't drag him down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he just remained so positive throughout. That it, when anyone asks me what my favorite scene is, I do say that my memories that of a goldfish. So I always said the last scene because it's the last thing I can remember. And uh, Jamal came up with this dance sequence at the end, which you know I sniggered when I thought, you know, there's no one's gonna come. And he didn't have a lot to do it by the way. And that dance sequence. And I gotta say something about Nikki Anderson, who is his assistant choreographer. He found him on YouTube. He's like 19 years old and he is the most incredible dancer I've ever seen. So, uh, shout out to both of those guys. Yeah, Nikki was in charge with, yeah, so. Yeah, I worked closely with Nikki and Jamal, what, you know, oversaw everything, but both incredibly talented people. And all the dancers as well. They're just amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, they're amazing. Yeah, the, the dance, the, what was happening with choreography, and I don't know if you knew it was going to be that, but choreography was sort of the, Vortex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sort of vortex of everything, right? So that they, you know, you're doing a, a, a dance sequence. So the choreography was the vortex um, of wardrobe, of set design, of uh, also all of the actors. We had decided how our performance was and things our characters would and wouldn't do, and then it had to get worked into the the dancing of it, and just uh, everything sort of fell on Jamal to make it all come together in a dance sequence. And he really, he just captured all of that stuff. You know, even the things like the, um, in the big sequence where I switch into uh, the woman and then go behind and timing those things out. And it was just, uh, I wish he was here because he gave it all of these props, but it, he really captured the, the center of all of those things and, you know, made it turn into, uh, uh, something that looks hot in a dance movie. <laughs> were, you, were you improvising in your songs, Will? 
Um, it, so uh, what was... What I love how you snuck in a question. <laughs> <laughs> security, security. <laughs> Sir, you're going to need to take that question back. You're going to have to take it back. Uh, no, what, what, was really, what was really great for me in, in terms of that is because the, 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 the genie, and uh, a lot of people don't even recognize this, but the genie is 100% CGI. People, people look at it and they think it's my face blue and it's my body. The genie is 100% CGI. There's none of me in the gene, right? So it's like the work was so good that, that they don't even get credit for it. Uh, <laughs> but what happened? What, what, what happened was great for that. For me, I would just be on set, so we run the scenes and everything, and I could do it on set. So I would improv on set because I knew it wouldn't be necessarily in the movie. Then we would do the first round of the CGI work, and then we could go again and we could work it. Then, guy watched the whole movie, and then I had another chance to go back, and we could play with lines and make adjustments, because they were going to create it anyway. So, uh, you know, for me, there, there was, uh, uh, you know, tons of improv, and, and, you know, we got to the point where uh, the guy was open, and anybody could throw something in, and we were throwing it in, and it would become a fun thing on set to, to you know, try to find that number one uh, answer. But it was, it was a yes. I could have just said yes. Someone else throws something in. Just notice that I could have just said yes. I did want to know really quickly. Speaking of dancing, on or off camera, who had the best moves? Mm. Ooh, well, that'll be me. That would be. Guy, duh. Guy, duh. Yeah, obviously. You know, he. I mean, yeah. I think it wasn't you, guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think Naomi has the most skills. Yeah, Naomi, Naomi most learns most choreography really faster than anyone. So I went to theater school and there was a whole dance department. She learns it as fast as those dancers. She's like watching it. She's like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I've never been yeah. able to do that. Yeah, like, she she and she's, just, she's one, of those, one of those that stands and looks and you've seen dancers do it. I know we've all seen it and you just, you like, there's no way they're learning it. And she's going, ah, ta ta, six, seven, eight. Ah. I'm just a wannabe dog. <laughs> like, put all of that stuff and then does it back. What the hell? I've just spent like three weeks learning. Yeah, it's like me too. You gotta learn. I know, but there's a lot of enthusiasm over there. Yeah. I don't really know what she wants to be. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a wannabe. I just, yeah. I would like hang out with it. Like, I'm to hang out with the dancers. <laughs> I was just it like, worked. hey guys. It worked. They were like, oh my gosh, go away. No, they were, they were lovely. No, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for thank joining you. us. Please thank give you. another round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.